But first, putting a lid on global warming. Today, the United States signed a major international treaty on global warming. The U.S. put its signature on the Kyoto Accord, which calls for sharp reductions of greenhouse gases by 38 industrialized countries. Now, most of those gases come about as a result of burning fossil fuels. However, a small but significant part of the problem comes from animals and the methane gas they produce. Tonight on Earth Tones, how scientists are trying to control the gases that come out of cows by changing what goes in. The only job these beef cattle have is to eat lots and grow fast. And now after a summer of grazing, they weigh more than 500 kilos apiece. The problem is, all that eating produces lots of methane. Worldwide, cattle produce uh, enormous quantities of methane, uh, probably about 15% of the worldwide emissions of methane. Uh, individual cattle can produce about uh, 65 kilograms of methane uh, per year. An individual dairy cow produces almost twice that amount because they eat more. When cows eat, they also belch. It's easy to miss, just a tiny shudder. Looks innocent enough, but imagine 1.3 billion cattle around the world, all belching, all day long. You get an idea of how big the problem is. Methane exists in much smaller quantities than carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But kilo for kilo, it has 21 times the warming effect. And it's increasing at a faster rate. The methane concentrations are increasing at about 1% per year, compared with about half a percent per year for, meth or for uh, carbon dioxide. And there's concern that eventually, methane is going to become uh, a major problem. In fact, the major problem. Although it's a small part of the total global warming picture, all plant-eating animals produce methane naturally. Humans account for almost half a percent of total animal emissions. Wild animals combined produce roughly 5%, sheep and goats more still. But cattle contribute a whopping 71% to the total. At the University of Manitoba, they study the inner workings of the cow's stomach. This research cow has been fitted with a plastic cap, a window on its digestive processes. You've just heard what is probably the release of a liter or two liters of gas, which normally the cow would be belching or exhaling. But because of the presence of the window, it's being released this way. The cap doesn't hurt the cow. This one has lived with it for five years. The cap goes straight into her first stomach, called the rumen. It's basically a big fermentation vat, churning hay while she eats. Now what you see here is that same hay, I'll take a sample of it out, that same hay after it's been ingested by the animal and after some of the bacteria, the microbes in the rumen, has started to digest it and ferment. Deep in the stomach, juices help convert the hay into energy. Dr. Wittenberg can reach right down and pull out a sample. You can see it's much more liquid. Each drop contains millions and millions of bacteria, fungi, and protozoa, all working to break this down into an energy and protein source for the cow. The bacteria in that fluid show up under the microscope. The ones that produce methane are very small. We commonly call them methanogens, and they're about uh, a billion to uh, 100 billion per milliliter of rumen fluid. They're very small. You might see something of this nature here. They're not very clear here, but they are the ones that take up the hydrogen gas and produce methane. Researchers have discovered that about 85% of the methane comes out the mouth and nose. The rest travels through the large intestine and is released at the other end. With that in mind, researchers have found a way to measure methane from the front end while the animal grazes. The stainless steel canister hanging from the neck has had all the air vacuum pumped out of it. A narrow tube in front of the animal's nose draws air samples down into the canister. When the cow belches, uh, a, a little bit of the gas gets pulled into this container, and uh, that happens continuously over a 24-hour period. 
For the past four years, they've been experimenting with different types of feed, comparing methane emissions from each. Dairy cows have also been tested. The methane measurements have to be very precise. This is the other part of the measurement process, a tiny capsule filled with a man-made gas called sulfur hexafluoride, or SF6. It's placed in the cow's rumen, where the gas is released at a steady, carefully predetermined rate. The SF6 tracer gas will mix with the methane in the cow's stomach. Samples of both gases end up in the canister. The samples are sent through a gas chromatograph. This machine measures the ratio of the two gases, and from this ratio, total methane output can be calculated. What they've found is that methane levels drop when the cow eats high-quality feed that's easy to digest. Our pasture trials have shown that animals on alfalfa-based pastures produce more with less methane production than animals that are on grass-based pastures. In fact, methane emissions dropped 10% when alfalfa was mixed in with the grass. The age of the grass also makes a difference. When dairy cows were fed younger grass, they also produced less methane. Come on. So if farmers can be encouraged to use top quality feed, then everyone benefits. The cow, the environment, even the farmer. Methane is an energy loss to the cow, and if we can somehow reduce methane production, then we can improve the bottom line and, and uh, uh, make cattle production more profitable for farmers. And uh, so that would be a win-win situation for both society and for the farmer. Tonight's Earth Tones was produced along with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. And if you'd like any more information about their work on global warming, please visit their website.